and advice with our graduates as they prepare to embark on their career. First, I want to start off by saying all praise be to the Most High. Thank you for having me. Um, so I'll start with that. Did y'all see the medallion that the president was wearing? It's like ludicrous trying to get one like that. I got to get him snatched up by the end of the day. Uh, let me tell you, when I came to Georgia Tech, Coach Cribbins came to me and said, if you come to Georgia Tech, we can get the next guy to follow you, Mark Price, and we can build something, and we can have this underground subway from New York City down to Atlanta. I didn't know it was going to come true, because <laughs> there's so many New Yorkers in this town now, I don't know if I'm in Atlanta. <laughs> and I came down to this wonderful place, and um, I got off the plane, and, I, and, and I, it's going to be a little black-white thing, but you got to understand what I'm doing. I got off the plane, and uh, when I grew up in Brooklyn, it was race ride. And my pilot was black. Flight attendant was black. The guy in the red jacket in Delta was black. He was nice then, you know. That's when Delta was nice to you. Uh, <laughs> now they go, hurry up. Um, I get in, the guy that grabbed my bag was black. Me and Coach Krim, me and Coach Felton, the only white guy I saw that day, was driving. Me, and I was black. And we come to the... <laughs> I said I was black. I'm still black. I'm just joking. <laughs> you make a million dollars, you lose your color. No, that ain't true. <laughs> and uh, I get to the Peach Street Plaza, and I go up, and I said, Mom, I'm going to Georgia Tech. She goes, well, how's the school? I said, I ain't see it yet. And then they took me to a physics class. To this day, I do not know what that man was saying. <laughs> and I was so happy I was able to get it. But this was the best experience. Now, when I went to school, of course, you know, it was much harder than you guys have, you know. Uh, I had to learn to speak the language, you know. Uh, <laughs> they didn't like slang in the classes. And they, they didn't like that I wrote in crayon. Uh, no, no, that was the football team. I'm sorry. Um, But I did, I came down and I walked around everywhere and I fell in love with the city. But it was harder because I was on a quarter system. That means like, first week, you had a test. You know, you didn't even know your teacher's name by the end of the, end of the 12 weeks. You just know you had a teacher. Now you guys, guys, you guys have semesters. They only cost, how much you say? $13,000 if you're from out of state. $13,000 to go to, go to college. If you ever missed a class and I was your daddy, <laughs> obviously we can't say the word, the other word, uh, we're just going to say Don, but you would get a kick in the off me. And I know, I'm going to tell you, I'm just only going to talk to you out of experience. This is the worst day of your life life. All you students, this is the best day of your life. Y'all can go refinance your house, go get that jacuzzi in the room that you wanted. You got to get a job. I mean, you know, it sounds like, yeah, man, I'm going to be on my own. I'm going to my own. No, you got a checkbook. <laughs> you got bills. You got insurance. Well, maybe. <laughs> That's that black thing again. Don't know if you got insurance. <laughs> but you're supposed to have insurance. <laughs> Life and car. You just should go right back into graduate school if I was you. <laughs> I would stay in college until I became one of them. <laughs> college is so good that he is the president of the college, right? Would you do anything else? No. 
me ain't got to pay for nothing. I had to buy the rolls myself. At least that's what he told me. I gave you $200. That's what he told me. No, but I'm going to say, I, I did have a lot of success, and it started here. Coach Crimmin was in my face. Uh, I never missed class, ever. You can ask any of my teachers. I had two of the best people I've ever met in my life, Dr. Yancey and Dr. Adler, who literally cared about me and had these conversations with me, talked to me as a man when I was a boy, and talked to me as a man when I became a man. Right now, I have a 17-year-old daughter, an 8-year-old daughter, and a 20-month-year-old daughter. Yeah, God, get me back. <laughs> but I <laughs> couldn't have a basketball. No, you got to have a girl. Um, and I'm telling you, I sit down there, and I realize the things I learn, not in elementary school, school right. the things I learn in college is what I teach. The things I learn in this college. The best thing about my life I'm going to tell you, is I moved to Atlanta, Georgia, and went to Georgia Tech. I moved my mother to Atlanta. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> my man over there said, you lying. You got four championship rings. No. It's the best thing that ever happened. I call this home. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. I'm a New Yorker, but I call Atlanta, Georgia home. People will tell you that. I just want to get serious for one second. Okay, I'm back. Uh, <laughs> what you're about to go into in this world that everyone thinks is, is really bad now, really rough now, you guys, like he said, can make the world better. You can sit in there and do what Georgia Tech alumnus do, become bosses while Georgia alumnus become employees. Take a second to smack in the back of the head. That's one of the roundabout jokes. It takes a second. But when you get out of here, not, don't just make your parents proud. You got to make yourself proud. Don't quit. Don't get in there and just settle. Don't sit around and say, I got a good job. I got my escort. I live in a nice, you know, one bedroom apartment. No. Uh, I'm going to tell you, when I got out of here, I got a great contract. $2.2 million at that time was a lot of dough. Still is for five years. And the valedictorian probably graduated and got a $40,000 job. And I was more proud of him than he was of me. It may sound crazy, but it's not. To the point when I finish playing ball, I'm still working, still trying to be the best I can possibly be, still representing this school. Last year when we went to the Final Four, they tell you I was probably more excited than anybody else, and I hadn't watched basketball for three years. I was the most proud of this Georgia Tech team. Not the Lakers team. I was proud of the Pistons. <laughs> did, I, did I tell you I was a Pistons? All right. I was proud of the Pistons. But I was really proud of this school and really happy to be a part of it. Really happy that this school got me ready for life as opposed to going out in that world and getting slapped in the face. I was ready for what was going to come because, like he said, I knew how to study all night and perform. I knew how to prepare. I knew how to be an adult because my mother and father wasn't there helping me along. I had to do it. Now, life goes on. You have to do it. You've been prepared. Step out there. Last thing I'm going to say, when they ask you, did you go to Georgia Tech? You say, I graduated from Georgia Tech. Voila. <laughs>